Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with the first episode in what's going to be a brand new playthrough of Expeditions Viking. Uh, you guys may recall we checked this game out when it was in like a pre-alpha state. And the game released um, two days ago for me, it's going to be three days ago I believe for you guys. But uh, I, I meant to do this on release date, on the release date, excuse me. But, you know, stuff happens, life gets in the way. So, we're a couple days late, but I've been really looking forward to this release, and here it is. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, start a new game, of course. And last time around, we played a warrior. I think we are going to play something similar this time. Um, it looks like character creation has changed just a little bit, but um, it still looks fairly similar. Uh, that was our portrait last time. Let's take a look at some of the other portraits here. That looks like our guy right there. Um, I don't know, he's got to look tough. We're supposed to be Thane of our own little village here, and if we can't hold it down, somebody's going to take our place. You know, I'm going to stick with the same portrait here. Uh, I don't actually remember our last character's name, otherwise I would just you know continue on his legacy, but I cannot recall, so we will just uh, get as close as we can. So let's see here, I'll give him blue eyes and his hair's a little bit darker than that brown, so that looks pretty good. Um, his hair, oh that's his face. Shaven, let's go stubbles, make that beard look a little bit thicker. Uh, definitely want the full beard there, did they add any new ones? We got bushy, none, braided. Actually braided's pretty close to what he's got going on in the picture there. It's somewhere between braided and full. I'm going to go with full, because he's got a little bit of a mustache going on there. Uh, let's see, this is his head hair, right? That's actually pretty close to what he's rocking in the picture. Uh, that's also close. <laughs> Ponytail, not a fan of that. Uh, we got the undercut happening. Can't have a Viking game without undercuts. Yep. Short and messy. Uh, let's go pull back. That looks pretty pretty spot on with what he's doing in the picture. One of these two. I'm going to go with the first one. And then for the tunic, we've got a couple of options here. I like the leather. Fancy's pretty cool too. And let's see. Oh, we can change his build. I forgot about that. So medium, large, thin. I like medium. We don't want to be like too big. Uh, all right, so fancy fur lined. Hmm, that's a tough call. I'm gonna go with fancy. We got, let's see, bracers, light sleeves, bear, so we can just go like straight up bear armed. Uh, heavy sleeves. I like either the the bracers or the uh, the bear arms. Hmm. I'm kind of digging that look. And then we got cloth shoes, we got boots, I like that. Sandals, uh, wrappings, like little booty things on his feet. And cloth shoes again, so let's go with the boots. And then we can change the color if we so choose. How's like red and white look? Uh, red and black maybe? Red and blue, hmm, I don't know. It's tough. Tough call. I like red and white, actually. Mm, no, I don't. <laughs> Black's not bad. Red and black. It's a pretty classic combination. Red and yellow's not too bad, either. I'll just go with the red and blue that we started with. What's the third color gonna change? Ah, uh, so it's like his pants. And then what on the banner? The logo? We'll go with yellow for that one. How about that? Okay, and I think that's everything. Let's uh, randomize a name here. Something I can pronounce. Hakon's a good name, I can say that. Father's name was Asbjorn. Njal. LD. I think that's Randveard. Helgi. Halbjorn. Falgir. Car. Yeah, Hakon, son of Car. Uh, sure, let's go with that. All right, now we got to allocate points. Uh, last time we played, most of these were not accessible, so uh, we'll have to take a look at some of the new ones there. 
you really don't benefit in this game, at least in my experience, from uh, trying to be too multi-dimensional. So you really want to pick your your strength and stick with it. Um, let's see. Sense is going to be mental resistance and stamina. Uh, perception is about accuracy with ranged weapons. Uh, reveal additional information during dialogue. So that's like your intelligence, basically. Uh... I don't remember how we built him last time. Hmm. Persuasion. Well, we are the leader. We don't want to be a total idiot. Let's go four there. Um, and then I can bump one of these up to six, or I can bump our strength up to nine. Hmm. We could do something like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. Or I could go... 7 there? Yeah, we'll be a, a warrior type. And then we have skill points, so... We basically need to decide what sorts of weapons we want to use. The one-handed axes with shields are pretty good weapons. Um, the sword's not bad either. Hmm. Let's see, what's the, uh, what's the sword's primary ability here? Sword rank 1, uh, what does this do? Nothing apparently. Heavy swing, ignores the target's damage reduction, and then execute. Okay, versus the axe, uh, the axe let, lets you hook shields to get the shield out of the way. Um, cleave, or hook weapons. Um, we went with the sword last time, let's stick with the sword. Um, I know we get a companion with an axe, so we'll uh, we'll go sword for ourselves, just so we have a little bit more diverse party. We'll upgrade that to one, two, three, maybe? No, we'll leave it at two for now. We do want to get some points into shield. What does this do? Defend. That's probably a good idea. And then we do have offensive skills. These are all new. I don't want to go through all of them right now, but through the, throughout the playthrough, we'll take a look at them as they become relevant. Um, these are like the support skills. So leadership is probably a good one for us to have. Uh, we've got crafting type skills here, or just general utility. And then these are passives. These are actually all pretty good. I will probably... Let's see. Some of these were like really, really useful. Evade... Evade is pretty pretty good to have. Uh, Night Owl. No, we don't need that. Quick Feet. That's also a good one. Relentless. Thick Skin. That's a good one for a tank. Uh, we just don't have enough points left. Sneak Attack, Sharpshooter. Nimble. Opportunist. Hmm. Pardon is also a good one for a tank. I just don't see anything that stands out. Let's go with some leadership first, I think. Wow, it is windy outside. So... Yeah, we're gonna go with leadership, I think. Okay, and that leaves us with two skill points. Uh, the minimum, I think, for anything is three, so we'll have to wait until we level up a bit. Yes, we are finished creating our character. So, if you've played Expeditions Conquistador, the level up system works a bit different in this game in that uh, it's not pooling the the skill thing so you don't have to pick and choose who to level up and who you're going to focus as they sought discord, our neighbors plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecarls across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norselands. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. 
Oh, man, that was just as good as the first time we saw it. Um, so, as I was saying, I, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so the level ups, the XP doesn't, like, pool for all the characters. You don't have to pick and choose certain characters to give attention to. Um, each character in this game will level up individually based on how much combat they see and how effective they are in that combat. So, I, I prefer this system to the Expeditions Conquistador one because it, it's kind of difficult picking, like, okay, who do I want to spend my level up on this time? Aid me, Odin, in my effort to bind the struggles of a bygone time as glimmering light on glass. It's the evening after your father's funeral. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother, Astrid, who hails from the land of the, the Geats, I, I think that's Geats, I struggle with that in Total War, and I'll struggle with it here, but I'm going to go with Geats insists on it. Uh, the Geats are from like South Sweden, just to give you some idea of you know where we are here, but I, I believe this takes place in like Denmark. All the thanes of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful thane, but as a warrior he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filing into your father's, your, longhouse. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans into the, in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the things before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. Okay. Characters with gold nameplates have dialogue for you. Click on them to talk to them. Alright, so let's start with uh, School, who's right next to us. School Skull Cleaver is the Thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory, and School is one of the most powerful Thanes in Jutland. Yelling has prospered under his rule. School pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. His face shows earnest sympathy. Hacka, my boy. So sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Yelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks, but we'll be fine. Yes, of course, I'm sure the clan is in good hands. Still, it can't be easy. Your father was a great warrior, but as a thane, ah, uh, one should not speak ill of the dead. He leans toward you, resting his elbow on the table. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? Hmm. I think I'll start by expanding our defenses. You really are, Karasun, aren't you? Just take care not to lose touch of your people's needs and your eagerness to defend them. He lets out a deep sigh and leans back into his seat. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of a similar inclination, he and I. That man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Hakon. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey, on account of my ties to Kao Peng. If I should... I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. Hmm. He knew what he was getting into, and he went anyway. A wistful smile crosses his lips. That sounds like your father. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later after a bit more mead. He nods more to himself than to you and turns his attention to the food on the table. Alright, so next we have Halfton over here. Let's see what he's up to. Oh man, I don't remember him from the uh, Alpha. Halfton is the thane of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression and nods heavily when you approach him. Karazin, I'm just going to call this Valhalla because that's essentially what it is, but this is like the proper pr or spelling, so I'm just going to go with Valhalla. Uh, he's in Valhalla now, Hakon. There's no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. But while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. If you'll permit me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes or needs of his people. Surely you're not expecting your claim to leadership to go uncontested. Uh, no, I've played the Alpha, I know for a fact it will. <laughs> um, so... Hmm... No one in this clan is more suited to lead than I. I'll win them over. Well, shit, let's hope you're right. At least it's plain for all to see... Wait, at least it's plain for all to see you throw a bloody fine feast. 
Halfton empties his mug of mead in a single gulp and slams the mug onto the table and calls to a thrall for a refill. Alright, well I like him, he's, he's fun. Rurik. Your elder brother Rurik always had a penchant for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Gokfeld, brother? He grins. I mean, my honored thane? How do you feel? Hmm. I think I'm fine. How about yourself? He shrugs. You can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain father is feasting with Odin now. The old man will surely be more at home in Valhalla than he ever was here. Hmm. How has everyone been treating you? Everyone knows you're the better warrior and a stronger willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thane. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are almost as relieved as I am that you took on the mantle. Well, I'd better go and be a good host. I'll talk to you later. He flashes you a cheeky grin. Just use the old signal if you need help to get out of a conversation with one of the other thanes. Alright, well at least he's on board with it. Wouldn't want like a power struggle within our own family. Uh, Kettle. Busy entertaining your guests? Kettle is standing off to the side holding a horn of, or, excuse me, a horn full of mead. The young hunter appears to be watching the feast with a faintly amusing, or a faintly amused expression. He nods respectfully when you come near. Busy entertaining your guests? Hmm. As busy as you'd expect. Why are you over here by yourself? He winks conspiratorially. Trying to decide who, pick, who to pick a fight with. I want this feast to be memorable, and nobody tells the story of a feast without a fight. Jokes aside, have you seen school's Huskarls over there in the corner? Uh, Hrodgira, Hrodgirda, and Skaki? I've heard stories about them. Nephew seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy on the mead and keep an eye out. I appreciate that. Never hurts to be careful. He throws his head back slightly towards Asleif. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big lug back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. As life is family, he wouldn't attack me. Kettle raises an eyebrow. Sure, he wouldn't do anything underhanded, but it's basically tradition for your families to fight over who gets to sit in the big chair. But this is your feast. I'll watch Asleaf and his friends. You should relax and enjoy yourself. Okay, so I think... Oh, we need to talk to Asleaf, and then I believe we are... Oh, no, we got a lot of conversations. I think they've added a few. I don't recall some of these being in the, the alpha... So let's talk to Asleif, see if he's up to anything shady. Asleif is a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. He's known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker. He sits with his two closest friends. Our condolences on the passing of your father. At least he, looked... he died the way he would have wanted. We will be feasting with the gods tonight. Okay, well he read that for me at least. Uh, he looks up when you approach his end of the table. Neither of his friends acknowledges your pre your presence. His tone is respectful, but slightly cold. Blah, 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 whatever he just said. Um, let's see. Thank you. I hope there's no bad blood between us. I'll try to be diplomatic here. He seems to consider this for a while before replying. It's no secret that I didn't agree with how Carr ruled our clan. Bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. But this feast is in his honor, and I will not insult his memory here, nor will I challenge your claim to leadership. You believe you'd be more suited to lead us? He leans forward and looks you directly in the eyes. I do. Hmm. Because my father failed you? It is not our way to let rulership simply pass from father to son. If we are to become a strong clan again, we must appoint the best warriors, Thane. I mean, the best warrior is not necessarily the best leader, man. I'm just throwing that out there. You're not the strongest of us, merely the less weak of your father's children. If you believe the gods favor you in this, I hope you will get the chance to prove it, but I will not simply wait for you to falter and bring the whole clan to ruin. You're wrong. I hope you'll give me the chance to prove it. He simply nods and returns his attention to his companions. Alright, we got like two more conversations and then we're gonna advance the uh, story here. Alright. Ranhild the White is the most influential of your guests. As the vassal of King Sigurd, she is the current ruler of Denmark. Yeah, I thought so we were in Denmark. So these are the Danes. Uh, she has come from the trade hub of uh, Ribi, or Ribe. I, I still have no idea. Nobody's ever given me a definitive pronunciation on that word. That's another one that comes up a lot in like Total War games and any like Viking strategy game. You always see this place and I have no idea how to pronounce it. So I'm going to go with... Uh, 
Ribby. That doesn't seem right. Ribe? I'm gonna go with Ribe, how about that? That seems a little bit less ridiculous. The hub of Ribe to the south, where she presides as Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It was a beautiful ceremony, Hakon. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of Ribe and of the king. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. We've all heard the stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasures. There's more danger than the rumors let on. I'm not surprised they claimed his life, but I am glad at least he died with a sword in his hand. Um, did you know him well? I knew him as a warrior. We fought together on the Bravalier. That can't be right, but whatever. And he struck me as a shrewd tactician. When your king needs you, I hope that you will serve him as well as your father did. Hmm. My father taught me everything he knew. She nods. I would expect nothing less of the man, but remember that no amount of practice is a substitute for actual experience. Hmm. Well, thank you for accepting the invitation. We are honored that you can make it. Of course. Your father's sword will be missed in our struggles against the Franks. If you'll excuse me, I must do the rounds. Enjoy the feast. The old shield man smiles. She graciously slides back down into her seat, whereupon she spears a large piece of chicken with her knife and dumps it on her plate. Alright, so... Nephia, our... One of our other friends, uh, the uh, Kettle and Nephew being like our two best friends or whatever. And then we'll sit down next to our mother and get, get this the moving on. Seems to be off to a good start. Nephew is one of your oldest friends. Your families have always been close, and you grew up together in the village. She's just finished pouring your mother a mug of mead. It's nice to see you out of your armor for once. She snorts sarcastically. If you see my sister in this dress before, surely that's the same thing. She closes her eyes and rubs the bridge of her nose with a finger. God, she was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. Hmm. Where is your sister? The sardonic undertone creeps into her voice. My poor sister has a fever again. She has such a frail constitution. All this wet cold is hard on her. Mother stayed home to care for her. Uh, what do you think of our guests? She chuckles. Your fellow things are certainly a proud and graceful bunch, even as they plot to murder you and take your lands. You think that poorly of them? She grimaces. Oh, I'm sure not all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about school, though. I doubt they call him Skull Cleaver for no reason. Hafton plays the lovable old grump, but I know he's had his eyes on our harbor for years. Ranhild, I'm not so sure about. She probably has nothing to gain from destroying us, but she's little more than Sigurd, uh, King Sigurd's appendage, and who knows where he stands. Well, let's talk about it later. I have to be a good host. Good luck and watch your back. Alright, so into the seat we go. And if this plays out like the Alpha did, I think we're in for a little bit of excitement. Following the initial meet and greet, everybody toasts your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. If you guys have ever had mead, it's it's a pretty good drink, especially warm. Um, it's, it's basically wine made from honey. Uh, very, very good with, uh, like, mulling spices. You heat it up in, like, a pan. Uh, or a, a pot, not a pan. But, yeah, I, I actually really enjoy mead, especially during the winter. Following the initial... Oh, never mind. I already read that. There we go. You're listening to Nephew's usual complaints about her mother when Kettle perks up and slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some pieces of pottery crashes against the ground and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open and the doorway is filled by Adar Erlingson, Sword in hand. Outside, you see his brother standing over the prone form of Kettle. Adar looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a, for such a shit thane. Adar's gaze stops on you. He raises his sword to point at you accusingly. Hack on. Your family had its chance to earn our respect, and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor. We'll burn this hall to the ground. Nephia jumps to her feet, already holding her knife. Her voice seized with disgust. Otter, you miserable drunkard. How dare you attack your Thane's honor during his own feast. Your family will pay for this. Otter has turned his back on you and is already walking back outside. All the other guests turn their gaze to you in anticipation. Your mother leans into, in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this. If the other Thanes think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see... Nephia, stay here. I'll handle these idiots. The shield maiden shakes her head. The drunk fool is here for a fight. I think we'll actually have to kill them this time. Yeah, we want to 
I don't think it matters what we say to her, but um, we'll we'll act tough and say that we can handle this by ourselves. We don't want any of these guys thinking we're weak. Uh, give me my shield. Oh, I guess we can just take it all. Uh, do we need to equip it? Let's see. Get that in there. Get this in there. And then we'll... Wait, come on. Ah, there we go. And then we'll put the old bow as a backup. We got some mead, too. That might help us. Uh, Nephew. Hold on, what do you got? Ah, damn it. Wrong, wrong tab. I'm figuring it out. Uh, we can switch here too, good. Okay, Nephia, you have a, oh, a simple spear and a knife, good. So she has the same gear she does in the rest of the game. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. You're dimly aware of the other thanes muttering amongst themselves. Nephia runs over to Kettle to help him back to his feet. A streak of blood runs from his hair down to his cheek, but it looks like he can still fight. Four against one, is this what the sons of Erling, uh, Thorgeselson? <laughs> There's like so many S's in that word. I'm pretty sure it's Thorgeselson or whatever. Consider a fair fight? Aldar's brother Torst sneers. He sounds drunk. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. Uh, let's see. Will you be alright, Kettle? The hunter wipes mud out of his eye. It's nothing. Toss hits like a little girl. In fact, no. I'm certain Nephia could do far more damage when she was little. I believe it. She's pretty tough. You sniveling little shit. Come over here and say that again. Hmm. Does your father know you're here destroying his name? Adar shifts his weight restlessly as he regards the thanes assembled behind you. He does not, but he will be proud of us when Asleif is finally our thane instead of you. Asleif steps forward and draws his weapon. You've gone too far, Adar. There's no honor in this. You must take Hack on side here. I like him. He, he might be a little bit rough to us, but he's honorable. He always does the right thing. For a moment, confusion mixes with fright in Adar's eyes, but he quickly composes himself. Fine, we'll kill you all then. Then I'll be Thane. Alright, so we get our first little bit of combat here. Um, it is turn-based. Um, it works exactly as you would expect. Um, so the green area here is basically your first action. Um, and then you can move into the yellow but that uses up basically all of your action so let's move to uh, we got a archer over there we want to watch out for him I'm gonna move um, hack on here and then with our let's see I don't think we want to defend necessarily let's attack and we'll see what we got left Okay, so we can move a little bit further or we can stay here, but if I move, he'll take an attack of opportunity, so we don't want to, you know, move anymore. But you can see that this is yellow now, so we basically spent our attack and we have a little bit of movement left. Um, whereas this is green, meaning she has full movement, and she still has this red dot, meaning she can still use her attack. She has a spear, so she can, she can attack from... She used to be able to attack from longer distance than that. Maybe she needs... Oh! I'm an idiot. I still had him selected. Well, he missed. Okay. I meant to select her. Um, so yeah, she can attack from two tiles away. So we can pretty much just hit him from right here. There's no reason to really move her. Yeah, I can't believe I... I need to put you back there. That was stupid of me. Luckily, he didn't take damage. The shield blocked it. Um, over here, we have uh, Asleif. I'm going to move him right here to stop this guy in his tracks. Uh, the combat works very similar to Battle Brothers, if, you, if you're following my Battle Brothers series. Except uh, the, the moving and the turns function a little bit more like XCOM style. It's, it's somewhere between the two. And we'll go ahead and attack here. And then we have Kettle here, the archer, or the hunter. Uh, archers in this game are extremely deadly. Let's see, we can't shoot him. We can hit this guy, though. Or we can potentially finish him off uh, he's got cover so we can't hit him let's actually go for the kill here nice so we dropped him uh, and I'm gonna move him into cover behind this rock and then we'll end our turn actually I should have moved everybody behind that rock but still still kind of getting back into the swing of it it's been a while since we played the alpha ooh that hurt 
Wow, he just took a really hard com combo of hits there. So... I'm going to basically run up on this archer. And take him out of the fight. Okay, so yeah, you can see that used up both of my actions essentially. So I can move the, the rest of my full movement, but I can't attack in this turn because I moved outside the green zone. Um, we are going to move Nefia to here, and we'll have her take a stab at this guy. And then hopefully Asleif can finish him off. It looks like he can. So that worked out pretty nicely. I'm going to move him into combat with this guy, and then we'll move her up as well. I think I'll put her there. And then I would like Kettle to shoot this guy. Nice, and he's harried, so he's going to be a little bit... Uh, or he's going to have a little bit of a rough time in his next turn of combat. Can he shoot twice? Apparently he can. That's a new ability. Does that mark him or something? I don't know. He's got an arrow sticking out of his head, though, which seems pretty rough. Um, That's going to basically do it for our turn, so we'll advance to the next one. He's going to use tactical moves so that he doesn't take an attack of opportunity. You can you can trip on terrain, as you saw him do there. Um, you look like kind of an idiot when you do it, but yeah, it can happen. So, hack on, move in. And let's see. Who do we attack? Uh, let's finish you while you're down. Okay. Uh, let's see. Asleaf, we're going to move you up to here. I'll go ahead and finish him off. And then, I believe you can move wherever you want, but go ahead and stay there, I guess. Nephia, hop in over here. Take a stab at our archer friend there. And that was pretty good. She hits the hardest of just about any of the characters with that spear. Um, so she's basically like a glass cannon. Although, I mean, she's not... Glass probably isn't the right word, because she can take some damage without too much issue, but... You don't want her tanking like you do with the guys with the shields. We'll put our archer over here, and we'll just shoot him in the back on the next turn. We'll see what he decides to do. He's basically got to stand and fight, so we blocked it. Um, I'm actually going to let Asleif set him up, and then we are going to finish him off. Cool. Eliminate all the enemies, and we have done so. Nobody going down. We almost lost uh, Azalef, though. Um, oh, light head trauma, yeah. From, I think they smashed a pot over his head or something. Adar Erlingson groans as he tries to sit up on the frozen earth. Kettle walks over to the soundly defeated farmer and kicks his weapon away. The lifeless bodies of his brothers are scattered around the yard in front of your hall. It appears that Adar and his father, or Adar is his father's last hope at continuing the lineage. Nephew regards the aftermath of the fight with a mixture of disdain and sadness. What do we do with him? Uh, I can't show weakness, man. I'm sorry, but you basically called me out in front of everybody. And you kind of forced my hand here. Like, if this was a private little scuffle, you know, I could let you walk away from this. But you called me out in front of all the other Thanes and one of the king's direct vassals, so you kind of have to die. The grim work does not take long. Your guests look on solemnly as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the blood of the, of the farmers. If any of them doubted your resolve before, now they see what you're made of. I didn't take any pleasure in that, but it had to be done. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, that's coming back to me now. That's, that's rough. Asleif steps forward. He looks not the least bit tired from the fight. He's like, he took all the damage. I don't think anybody else even got hit. I support I supported you here tonight because Otter and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Hakon, son of Kar, I challenge you to a duel for the position of Thane. An excited murmur rises among the guests. Kettle mutters in a voice too low for anyone other than you and Nephew to hear. Can you believe this idiot? Or this... I don't know what that is. Bikju's son... I, I don't know, jackass, take your, take your pick. 
All right. It's his right to issue such a challenge. His timing could be better, though. Hmm. Asleif, son, son of Grimvard, I accept your challenge. He nods, apparently satisfied. We will meet you on Home Gang Island at noon on the morrow. May the gods favor you. Who's we? Like, all your... Oh, were those your friends? I guess not. I thought they were with him at some point, but I don't think those were the people sitting inside with him. Okay, so we are going to end the episode here because I think it's already gone on a little bit too long, but we will deal with that in the next episode. There's going to be a little bit of stuff that happens before it. Um, basically, you talk to your mother, and if you so choose, there are some things you can do to prepare for the fight, or you can just go right at it. I'm not sure what I want to do about it yet because this character is built a little bit differently than our last one. So I might be able to do this fight a little bit more directly than I had to last time. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Expeditions Viking with you. I'm really excited that the game is finally released. Um, the alpha had a ton of content and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So I'm looking forward to the full game here where we actually get to manage our own, uh, like, I don't know what to call it, our own village. Um, basically, we only got to see a little bit of the questing in the alpha and some of the, the storyline. Here, we're going to get to do that plus all of the the village management stuff that we didn't get to see in the alpha. So that's going to be really cool too. Anyways, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.